Welcome to another Unnecessary Computer Things. Uh, today we're going to work on producing music through the SID chip, actually multiple emulated SID chips through the Vice emulator eventually here, uh, but through C code, which if you've looked at some of the basic examples for how to program the SID chip, uh, in the, especially in Commodore 64, but even in the Commodore 128, it's pretty slow and basic. Uh, then, and, and just the nature of the basics, uh, it's actually easier some in some respects to do it in assembly. But there's a program, a compiler called CC65, that will allow you to compile to the 6502 assembly or machine language and run it from there. So one of the first things I did with this uh, is I actually went through, there's a C Commodore music programming uh, book, and I took all of those scale values, and I actually, this is, there's a C file called scale here, um, and I input all of those, uh, these, these are pitch values in here, but they're not actual frequencies. They are, there's an adjustment factor that happens. So because A440 would be uh, somewhere in here, uh, B, B flat, A, A, so actually this one, uh, A440 is that. And that's obviously not a 440, it's 7217. Um, there, there's a, scaling factor for these to make it fit so that you can have these low ranges actually show up uh, as an integer. Otherwise, they might be too small um, to have the, the proper granularity there. So what I did is I actually created an array of all of these known values and uh, put them in a nice array here. And then I actually created, and this is not this is not 6502 destined code. This is actually code to generate a header file for working with 6502 code. Um, but I also created a note names array here. And uh, this is where I landed. It's, I'm a little rusty in C, so there might be a better way. But I actually decided to include B sharp, the B and E sharps, the double flats, the double sharps, uh, because one of the things I wanted to do is, is uh, transcribe some Bach in like C sharp major and stuff like that. And it does have a lot of double sharps. And it's easier if I can just have CX versus C, trying to do the translation. Okay, what is a C double sharp? Oh, it's a D. So I went ahead and created these. Uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use these to generate pound of fines uh, that will be useful as symbols. So, and then down here, this is actually generating the output for the header file. I'm just outputting it standard out and then capturing it, even though I am specifically using a pound of fine naming convention for a specific named header file. Uh, but when you run this, it and there's a there's an adjustment for like the B sharp and C flat to change the octave that it's referring to. It's going to do octaves zero through seven, uh, and then it's going to do every alias for every pitch in there. So what it ends up generating uh, is just a long pound of fine now. Because these are just macros that get translated directly to whatever values, yeah, you can make uh, one, you can go back to the scale file and make adjustments like say you don't particularly like the tuning on these pitches. So you can tweak those pitches just via, via here and regenerate. Uh, maybe you don't even like the, the certain temperament that these are tuned to. Um, I think this is based on just the exponential uh, 
12 subdivisions of, of the exponent scale. Uh, so I can't, I can't remember if that, which temperament name that is, but if you don't like that tuning, you can actually update this and then regenerate this and have that, have those notes play. So with this, and I'm going to just kind of flash an example. This is, this is an overly scaled, uh, an abused version of what was from uh, somebody, somebody's blog post uh, where they were translating the, the C user guides or C64 user guides, basic examples into C. Uh, so I've actually, this was my first test where I was just, I have all the scale numbers, uh, note values, and then I'm just doing offsets and actually this isn't real life Commodore 64 even for Nick for modified this is only going to work on probably an emulated mode uh, even some of the FPGA ones that only have two SID chips not three but so we set up the values on each of the SID chips here and then what I'm doing is a base frequency uh, this is a fifth up, this is an octave, and then basically building, building mostly a major chord, and then these two are the seventh, uh, the dominant seventh and the uh, ninth of the chord, and then this is an actual one octave below, uh, and then we mod these so that it just wraps around. Um, this is kind of disturbing but when it gets up to the high pitches because there's a lot of high pitch and it's inaudible at the low ranges because the first couple octaves are are like octave zero and octave one but this is this is where i started and uh one, one thing you do you have to define attack and decay and first nibble is attack second nibble is decay on these and the attack the attack is zero is immediate and F is gradual, more gradual, and then the decay is the opposite, where you high value for immediate and or high value for holding out the note and low value for cutting it off immediately. Um, but actually, I guess those are those are symmetrical, but in terms of effect. Uh, a uh, low attack number and a high decay number uh, produce, I believe, the longest sustain note. Let me, I can, let me double check that. Yeah, so, so in this example, I actually do a zero and F. So zero decay, or zero attack, F for decay, uh, which is the longest decay, uh, basically none. Um, and then you go in through this loop and we have the control voice. So this is actually a value to turn the voice on and my comments are wrong, but, um, uh, hex 11 is to play the note and hex 10 is to shut it off. And in here, there's a delay loop before you shut it off and then a delay loop before you play the next note so there's a note off note off okay so that's a quick rundown of that uh the also there is a struct sid defined in the the c64 include file in order to add extra sid chips really all you have to do is just uh cast uh, pointers that that struct SID uh, to the new memory lo location. And so I have a SID2 at DE00, and that's the way I have it set up in VICE. And then SID3 at this location. And those are the defaults for whatever version of VICE I have on here. So what this ultimately does is for Canon and D, uh, so I have the first First set of notes here. Uh, this is that 
baseline. And then this one is the, that initial high, uh, slow uh, melody in lockstep with the others. And that's, that's a problem, or there's gonna be a problem that comes up as well, what if you have faster notes, because I'm using the same delay, delay loop for each round here. But, so why don't we just uh, start in on this one. So if you go back over to the uh, this shell here and uh, actually CL65, so CC65 has a shortcut that's compile and link uh, and then dash O for output to your executable file, and then you just give it whatever source files, dot C's for C files, and I think dot S is for assemble, assembly language files. Okay, and then the way you load this up, and it, the menu won't show here, but uh, in, in this version of Vice and C64 uh, SC, I do a smart attach disk and select that Canon and D, this one that I just created. So when you load this, it actually has a one line basic program that just tells you where to start. So 2061 decimal is where the machine language program that compiled from C is. And actually, if you notice, uh, another feature here is this is 586 bytes. Uh, it's probably, at this point, comparable to how large the basic program would be, uh, at least in Commodore 8128 land. The, one, the 64 version might be longer. Um, but when you run it, notice it's kind of this is uh, the square wave and it's there's no attack there's no decay it's just solid note there's no break programmed in here a little glitching on the emulator today, but uh, you get the point on that. So one modification we can make in here, and eventually I'll program this a little bit better for loops, but what if we wanted to add a third line? So I think it's D5. <laughs> I'm going to just make this up for a minute. So descending scale uh, D5, C5, B4, it up okay so in re reality what happens in the actual piece, which I will correct for later, but it's, it's easier to look at it this way right now, is it e each line picks up the, or the, each line continues and then the next line picks up from the beginning. But we're going to simulate that from now because I still haven't solved the problem of um, uneven note timings. So let's go ahead here. Um, now that we have this, 
and recompile just because I'm not sure where we are. Uh, do a sm smart attached image and load it. So, as you can hear, that um, played all three lines independently here. Um, some things I want to do tackle next are uh, tackling those uneven notes. Uh, the next phrase that comes up has eighth notes and then subsequent ones have sixteenth notes, so we definitely have to handle that, make this more loopable down here, this uh, section. And then um, obviously get it, these just one off ifs in, and that will really be solved by having rest measures in here. Uh, so when we define the notes, the opening line will start and then we'll have rests for a couple measures and then the next line and the next line. Uh, and then also taking out this timing loop again will solve the problem of, uh, well, arbitrary looping, but then we can also have different length um, notes so that we're not having to play them all simultaneously. Um, have some various strategies on that that I'm going to try, but uh, I got to think on that a little bit. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.